Hi guys, Keith Darkberg Farms. It is now a uh, second week of June and it has finally stopped raining after three long weeks of constant rain. Well, two long weeks of constant rain. And one week of this week of raining every single night like it did last night. We're going to get to replace this tunnel, which I've been working on. But for now, take you over here and because we're still working on side and everything because it's been raining so much i'm going to show you how we're setting up the trellises in this tunnel here very neat way i've kind of done it this year so let me show you Now, since the price of materials is so darn expensive this year, I'm not gonna add the purlins across like I've got in this big greenhouse behind me. Instead, what I got was a bunch of double loop chain I got off of Amazon. It is number three, and it is, uh, I got 100 foot of this. So for my 90 foot tunnel, I used um, about one and a little bit more. Got about one and a quarter. So I probably got about 120 foot of trellis times two. So about 240 foot of trellis off of one roll. So to start with, I've got my cutting bench here, which is very, very useful. It's just a little stander thing, a little uh, bench that you can stand on, sit on, what have you. I mounted my bolt breakers, because that's the easiest way to cut this chain, to the end of it with a clamp. That way it's always there, I can just go and cut. Next, I went on the bench and I go from here and then I came back with a tape measure to the length of my chain and I marked a mark on the bench. That way I can just unroll my chain, hold it from there to the mark, hold the length that needs to be cut, come over here and cut it. So what we do here hold it to the end of the bench, hold it to my mark. I know that is the link I have to cut. So I take that, bring it over to my bolt cutters, and I cut that link where it needs to be cut, and because of this type of chain, I cut the next side because it's a double loop. So we've got two loops cut there. That way we can get the cut part out of it. So that's our next starting point. That is the link we removed. And then we got our chain. So I'm gonna go through and cut the rest of them and we'll go install them. So the next process of this is, um, I have stretched string lines here all the way down the greenhouse because I need a straight line all the way down. This is actually a farmer's friend uh, cat tunnel. It is the 16 foot wide on ground post. Um, like I said earlier, I didn't want to buy purlins and stretch them across because they're expensive. They're like $15 a pop now, and I got 18 of these. Chain was like $30 a roll, so I think that was a no-brainer. Um, I already went ahead. Well, actually, I had Adam already go ahead. I did the side behind me. Uh, I ran the string line down. As you can see, there's chains all the way down. The last ones I got to do are on the very end, so I'm going to drop my line which I found to be a lot easier before I put my trellis line up. And then the last two screws I have, which I'm just using self-tapping, those number eights, they're your common ones. And I'm just putting them through the very top link. And into the bow. Make sure I did that right. Because this one's longer than this one. And I just want to assure I have them in the correct positions. Now, I did measure over. Um, I centered my first trellis, which is behind me, 
over the top of that bed. Slightly off from the ridge pole because the ridge pole up here kind of moves around a little bit as it goes down. I streamlined it, it's pretty close. Um, so what I'm dealing with here is I've got 30 inches in between beds on my trellis and then inside of the bed is 18 inches and that's actually how far my cucumbers are spaced staggering down this bed. So I've got 18 inches where they're planted in between, there we go, in between in the bed and then along in the bed they're 18 inches apart as they step down. So we've got all of our trellis material up now. Now I'll show you what I did on the end walls. Typically on the end walls, like here in the big high tunnel, what you see is a 2x4 and I screw it to the wall. Connect, go across. Over here I had to be a little bit more creative. I actually have the door kit for this thing, which uh, I should have just made my own. I've had more problems with that than anything. Um, but what I did is I took a piece of track, which I happened to have laying around, that's for uh, electrical work, and stretched it across. I did the same thing down there at the far end but I've got it supported by some chain and I might have to drop something in the center to support it. I don't know yet. I won't know until let's get some tension on it and I see if it starts moving too much. Because basically now I'm just gonna run my trellis wire, which is just a electric fence wire, all the way across, twist on or tie onto these, twist it off and I'll be done. So then at both ends, I do that right there. Let me zoom in there. I just do a number of twists. I don't know how many that is, eight, 10 maybe. And then for some reason, I always leave this loop and then twist it off at the other side. Not 100% why I do that, but I pretty much do that everywhere. I don't know. Have extra wire thoughts in my brains put tensioners on, tensioners on them later i don't know but now that we got the trellis set it's time to drop the lines okay so now we take our trellis line and we take it go over the top and we're feeding this off of our spool of twine out of our bucket until we reach the ground. Reach that point, we go through, we make a loop, we tie one overhand knot, and then we tie a second overhand knot. That secures us to the line. Now here's a trick I actually learned from Adam, one of our field workers today. I come out here and he's got this going on. Scissors tied around his neck with a piece of twine. Great idea, because then they're always here, you bring them up, you make your cut, drop them down, they're there again. Me, I would just use my holster that I keep my cutters in, but hey, you learn something new every day, and I just love seeing people do this kind of stuff because it's just great ideas that I just love finding out about. So next we'll go down to the ground, we'll pin it, and then we're basically done. So now down here at the ground, we go down, get about to the ground, give it just a little bit of slack, Fold it over, we tie a single overhand knot with that loop, just like that right there. And that gives us a spot to loop our landscape stake in. And then we push our stake right next to the base of the plant. Now when it starts growing, we'll take and we'll start to twist it around as it goes up and trellis our plants. So, in about a week or two, this is what you start to end up with. We're just twisting the plant around. I always go clockwise, so I remember which way we're going. And we'll just wind those every couple days or so. With cucumbers, we do not cut the suckers off. We just keep them going. They'll do a little bit of winding themselves, but not too awful much. Okay, my batteries are running low, so I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Pretty simple. Chain leak, hanging from the top, trellis wire, strings going down, cucumbers wound up. So, hope you all like me Saturday. If you did, 
don't forget to like and subscribe also uh, i want to check out more cool stuff we got go over to arkenbergfarms.com go down to the bottom digital content there's a bunch of cool stuff over there go and check that out and uh yeah thank y'all have a good day empty full